dark side of Japanese schools. The Japanese education system is often considered one of the best in the world. It's renowned for creating excellent performing students, thanks to its high quality content with a strong emphasis on ethics and morals. It's not without critics though, as some deem it too harsh and strict, limiting students' creativity during their growing years. Today, I'll tell you about the most extreme Japanese school rules. Number 1. Japanese schools have very strict regulations when it comes to students' hair, from its length, how you style it, and even the color. For example, male students are usually required to keep their hair short around the ears and neckline, and fringes should not be long enough to touch the eyebrows. One boy was separated from his classmates and made to sit at the back of the hall because he braided his hair into cornrows at his graduation ceremony. As it turns out, the boy was one of mixed background and wanted to pay tribute to his heritage. The principal of the school stated that the boy was simply segregated for failing to follow the rules on haircuts. Students should also only have black and straight hair. Some students who have naturally curly or brown hair were even forced to dye or straighten their hair to comply with the regulations. If they're adamant about keeping their natural hair, they need to come up with real hair certificates or jige shomeisho signed by their parents with proof such as childhood photos of the student to compare with current looks. People have been complaining that this is a form of forced assimilation and discrimination towards students, especially those of foreign origin. Thankfully, as of recent developments, Tokyo public schools have dropped the strict hairstyle prohibition and adopted a more relaxed approach. The jury's still out about the other Japanese city though. Number 2. One silver lining in Japanese schools is the fact that they're handling what's called period poverty in which female students can afford pads or tampons. Some schools in Japan are now providing tampons or sanitary pads for their students that are easily accessible so they won't have to worry about their monthly periods anymore. The central government even set aside funds to support the cause and distributed it to municipalities across Japan. The Miyazaki Prefectural Board of Education has initiated free sanitary products across all 52 prefectural school bathrooms, which they hope can be a sign for other education boards in Japan to follow suit in the effort to end period poverty. Number 3. Japanese schools ban ponytails for female students. Aside from regulating color and types, Japanese schools also ban certain hairstyles, specifically ponytails for schoolgirls. According to school officials, ponytails are banned because they could sexually excite males. After all, the nape of the girl's neck is exposed. This can distract boys from studying, as it'll be focusing more on the girls. If they want to, girls can wear their ponytails lower so as not to show their necks. Curiously, such hairstyles like a short bob that also show necks are not banned. But no explanation is given for the difference between the two hairstyles. According to experts, the intention is to ensure no one is different or stands out from the crowd. Parents and teachers alike have expressed outrage at the rules, deeming them unreasonable demands. They've pushed for the Japanese government to revise the education regulation. And now, more schools are modifying their dress code to embrace students' stylistic freedom. Number 4. Female students aren't just required to stay away from ponytails, they're also expected to only wear certain colors of underwear. Around 65% of municipalities in the Chiba prefecture require their students to wear only white underwear. School officials said that this can prevent the influence of fashion trends, minimize the financial burdens on families, and protect from public moral disruption. One junior high school in Miyakonojo, Miyazaki, stated that underwear should be solid colors, such as white, black, navy, gray, or beige. The students were not allowed to wear anything that had patterns and may be visible under the uniform. Alarmingly, some students have to take off their underwear at school for not wearing the specified type. 
There were also reports of students lining up in the hallway to open their shirts to be checked for appropriate underwear in the presence of male students inside the gymnasium. Although the rule may have its reasoning, it seems that there needs to be a change in how it's enforced. Students should also have control of their autonomy when it comes to their choices. There have been open discussions on the opinions of students regarding these regulations, leading to reviews for rules that are not in line with today's values. Number five, despite its strict rules and regulations, Japanese schools still deal with rising cases of school bullying or Ijimi across elementary, junior high, and high school levels, with over 682,000 reported cases in 2022. The main types of bullying include teasing, threatening, and insults. Other common types of bullying are being physically struck, excluded from groups, or ignored. It's estimated that these bullying cases have contributed to young students taking their own lives. Although multiple factors may come into play, bullying remains a significant aspect when it comes to youth suicide. In one particular case, a 13-year-old boy lost his life due to extreme bullying. His tormentors often asked him to practice taking his own life. His bullying was witnessed by 60 other students, but his teacher has always dismissed the claims as jokes. The boy was forced to consume dead bees and humiliated in front of the classroom by taping his mouth shut. His school has downplayed the boy's cause of death and has concealed evidence that can prove the horrible bullying case. When a whistleblower leaked information regarding the bullying, it incited public outrage on how the school system has failed to protect a young student. Number six. Did you know that Japanese students have to clean their classrooms? If schools in other countries often rely on their janitors, Japanese students are taught to be responsible since they're young. In Japan, there is a specific period in their learning time deemed as cleaning time, or a soji. The Japanese government considers cleaning as a part of their education, where students can learn how to clean and utilize this ability in their daily lives. It also aims to grow students' benevolence and sense of responsibility. Usually, a soji starts after lunch and can last for about 20 minutes. On a typical cleaning time, teachers will form groups of five to six students to clean certain places in school, each group responsible for a specific spot in the classroom, corridors, and even the toilets. By doing this, the students are expected to keep a good habit of cleaning and taking care of public places or their surroundings. It also aims to prolong the use of desks, chairs, and classrooms. Some students even extend their cleaning duties to the surrounding neighborhood with an activity called Chico season or neighborhood cleaning. Armed with cotton and gloves called Gunte, they'll head out to pick up trash in the neighborhood around the school. Number seven. Japanese students are prohibited from dating. In some schools, students are not allowed to date because it might distract them from studying and affect their performance. The Horikoshi Gakuin High School has a rule that states special relationships between boys and girls are prohibited as they're inconsistent with the true purpose of being a student. An example of the case is a high school girl who was in her third year at the school. She was confronted by her homeroom teacher and asked whether or not she was dating another student. After the homeroom teacher asked many personal questions, she was told to go to the principal's office, who then told her to quit the school. The girl dropped out even though she was only three months away from graduating high school at the time. Previously, she has also received a recommendation letter for university admission from the school, but the letter was annulled because of her violation. The student decided to sue the school for 7 million yen in compensation. The court ruled that the rule was reasonable and valid, as it aimed to keep the students focused on the task at hand. But it also said that the punishment given to the female student was too severe. In the end, the student was only awarded 980,000 yen in compensation by the court. Number 8. 
Japanese schools have discipline ingrained in their values, which is why punctuality is one rule that every student goes by. Some even have an extreme perception that being on time is running late. In Japan, time is respected, so arriving late to school is not just a sign of minor delay, but a sign of disrespect. Students should be in their classes before the class starts. They should abide by the five minute rule. This means that if your school starts at 8 a.m., they should at least arrive and be ready at their desk by 7.55 a.m. Japanese always put a strong emphasis on collective harmony. Punctuality is then required when you're a part of Japanese society because being late can disrupt the smooth functioning of group activities and create inconveniences for others. Number 9. In other countries, students could get away by only saying hi to teachers and administrators when they enter a classroom. But in Japan, it's compulsory to respectfully greet elders whenever you cross paths. Bowing, or ojiji, is a big part of Japanese culture, which students constantly use when they see elders. It's a mark of respect and emphasizes the social ranks between people. Students usually do a standing bow, where a person looks straight ahead with hands placed on their thighs and back straight at around a 70 degree angle. Specific greetings in class shall also be used by students for their teachers. When the class is about to start, students will stand and greet the teacher by saying Yorushiku Ogashimas. At the end of class, the students will bow and say Origato Gozaimashita. Number 10. This particular rule may not be too foreign. Japanese schools ban mobile devices altogether in elementary and junior high schools. In high schools, mobile devices are not allowed inside the classrooms. This rule was created in 2009 but has since been revised and lifted. That's because Japan is known as a country that's prone to earthquakes and emergencies. It's thought that mobile devices can help locate students during an emergency. Now, the principals of each school can determine the rules for their institutions. Some may allow mobile phone usage in the classrooms, while others may limit it during lesson time. Number 11. Aside from underwear, Japanese schools also enforce other strict dress codes for students. For example, students are only allowed to wear white socks that's folded vertically. In a humorous turn, one student was asked to buy an appropriate pair of socks when the school deemed his right sock to be appropriate while the left one wasn't. Most also require students to wear only black, formal shoes without brands or logos, eliminating differentiation between students. Another cruel regulation that some schools enforce is prohibition from wearing tights for female students. Students are not allowed to wear tights under their skirts, even during cold winter months. The reason behind this ban is still unanswered. Some say that the school might be worried that students can show up wearing colorful or distracting patterns on their tights. Number 12. In certain schools, there's no substitute teachers even when the attending teacher is absent. When this happens, students are expected to take care of themselves and finish their assignments and study independently. This gives them a sense of responsibility and enhances their capacity for independent learning. It might seem odd, but Japanese schools have taught their students to be disciplined from day one. Before I continue, let's see how well you've been paying attention. Let's test your knowledge with a quick question about one of the strict and surprising rules in Japanese schools. Ready? Here we go. Which strict rule in Japanese schools has been criticized for possibly invading students' privacy and autonomy? A. Students are required to wear only white socks folded vertically. B. Female students must wear only white underwear, which can be checked by school officials. C. Students are prohibited from participating in non-school related activities such as jobs. D. Male students must have their hair cut short, with no fringes touching the eyebrows. You ready for the answer? The answer is B. Female students must wear only white underwear, which can be checked by school officials. This rule has been criticized for being overly invasive, which many view as a violation of privacy and personal autonomy. Sounds a bit harsh, no? Write your comment down below. Okay, let's continue. Number 13. As a nation surrounded by the ocean, swimming lessons are a part of Japan's elementary school curriculum. 
It's also one of the most popular sports in Japan. It's so popular that the majority of their elementary and junior high schools have their own swimming pools on their premises. Many believe that one of the reasons behind the introduction of swimming as part of the PE curriculum are two tragic incidents in 1955 when many school children lost their lives from drowning. One of the incidents was when the Shiun Maru Ferry collided with Uku Maru Ferry. The other one is when junior high school students participated in an annual summer swimming lesson that resulted in several people losing their lives due to abnormal currents at Naka Gawara Beach. Number 14. Japanese students participate in sport or cultural clubs in their school, or known as bukatsu. These clubs are an essential part of their education as it teaches them social interaction with students of different ages and fosters favorable relationships between students and teachers. Some are so dedicated to their clubs that students often stay after school, on weekends, and even during vacations or summer holidays to participate in activities. Number 15. Most Japanese schools don't allow students to wear any makeup at all. If they're caught by school officials, they'll be asked to wipe it off in the school bathroom as it violates the school rules. Some students resorted to wearing undetectable makeup, a trend that's been blowing up Japanese social media recently. The viral videos give tutorials to students on how they can wear very natural makeup so that it's not detectable by school. It's called the Gakko makeup, and with the state of current regulation, it seems that the trend might gain more traction. Number 16. In most elementary and junior high schools, students are not allowed to bring their lunch to school. But there's a very good reason behind this rule. Japanese school lunches are thoroughly planned by a nutritionist that works for the school. It's made fresh on site, with special attention to its nutritional values. Unlike the soggy nuggets or tater tots other countries serve, common meals in Japanese schools usually include vegetables, noodles, rice, salads, healthy protein, fruits, tea, and a bottle of milk. Parents are required to pay around 250 yen or US $2.50 for the meals, which is a bargain when you think about the nutritional benefits. Number 17. Students automatically advance to the next grade, even if they're doing badly in class. Unlike other countries, Japanese students are allowed to graduate to the next grade no matter how badly they did or if they skip classes. But this is not something that happens often, since most students are facing societal pressure from their peers and parents to perform well. Test scores are also important when they're applying for high school or university, so it's almost a given that most students in Japan always work hard, even if they're allowed to advance without a passing grade. Number 18. Japan has a different school year timeline compared to the rest of the world. Their academic calendar begins in April and ends in March. And instead of having two semesters, the school year is separated into three different periods, April to August, September to December, and January to March. Did any of these school rules shock you? Were they different from the ones you had when you were in school?